Hey everyone and welcome back to another video and before we get started uh, in today's video and the topic I want to discuss today it's going to be a huge topic um, broken up to different categories. I do want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jairo Salas and this is my channel. I do have two channels. Um, my main channel called Jairo Salas and then my horse dedicated channel called Hoof Haven just in case you guys come across those two channels you guys aren't confused about what's going on um, as well as um, I am an animal science major right now, uh, meaning I'm pre-vet, so I kind of uh, am learning a little bit more of the science behind of um, horses and things like that, so I am not an expert, I do want to say that, so uh, I have all the videos you see on my channel, take it with a grain of salt and do your own research, and as well as consult your vet as well, um, but enough talking about me, let's get on to the video. All right, so the topic we're going to be discussing in today's video, it's going to be digestion of the horse. Um, recommended or very requested by all the viewers, um, as well as some close family and friends, essentially because they want to get started with horses, know a little bit more, because essentially um, they want to do more research before actually going in all in with horses. So this was one of the videos that they wanted me to touch on. So I'm going to be breaking up to three categories. Um, this video that way it's not too much information and you guys can just skip uh, whichever information you guys are looking for As well as if you guys have any questions in this video, make sure you guys comment them down below the Topic I do want to discuss it would be the change in diet um, Essentially the question the full question is What if I want to change my horse's diet? How can I go by that without them colicking? So um, I'm gonna show you a little personal experience with my horse named Floor um right now i do have her at the farm long ago i did want to introduce rather than change the diet um, you can go by it with changing the diet as well what you can do is mix some of the old feed with the new feed a little bit of the new feed um, it can be one or two ratios so probably like a little portion of the new feed and double portion of the old feed that way they kind of get the taste of the new feed and not completely shock their digestive system essentially when we are trying to transform the horses from an old diet um, to a new one we want to take it slow just essentially because there is something called colicking which horses can get it's almost like a stomach upset like how we do when we need a throw up or we get a stomach ache horses can't throw up so this is why they produce colic Central. All right, the next topic I want to discuss is what is colicking basically? Colicking is when the digestive tract of the horse uh, becomes upset of either new or disturbing feed that they're not used to. Essentially, the body wants to reject this and it can't because it's a one-way system. Essentially, when it goes through the mouth, it has to go out through the other end um, and it can't reverse like us how we throw up. So that's how they create colicking. Um, essentially, I can go a little bit more detail on the signs of colicking, but essentially I just want to touch the very basic of what it is. Um, it is basically a stomach upset that they get um, with stress, not only uh, feed change as well as environmental changes. And if they're being transported in, um, and they're really super stressed, they can get colic um, depending on the situation, the horses and how actually the stomach of the horses, because like I said, every horse is different, so it really depends. On the horse. I do want to touch on some signs of um, colicking if you are curious to see uh, if your horse is col colicking. Um, some signs is they're laying down longer than they're expected because horses do lay down to sometimes rest um, and that's pretty normal but if you see them laying down for a period of time, if you see them not getting up, not eating, not drinking, um, that just shows that sometimes the feed gets compacted or sometimes they have a stomach ache as well um, as well as they lose weight, appetite, things like that, almost like humans. We um, are not hungry, we feel sick, basically unknown behavior um, with the horse. This is um, close to eating and drinking, essentially. So going a little bit more into detail with that, um, with Flor, I introduced her to the new uh, Purina strategy and I wasn't previously feeding her pellets other than alfalfa. Um, Timothy hay pellets and as well as the pure um, pasture um, so what we did in the farm was we first introduced a little bit 
probably want to say less than a pound of food with um, like two pounds of the alfalfa hay and every couple of days like three days I would increase it little by little until I got to the de um, desired pound that I wanted to feed it with the new feed um, you want to do this that way um, like I said you don't shock the digestive system of the horse and as well as you're changing your digestion to the horse like changing it to a new feed rather than introducing it um, what I what I would do is do the same thing um, start little portions mix it with um, the pure pasture if you have any if you're giving any to your horse little by little increase it over time as well as some bags of feed where you get them from the feed store do have instructions of how much to increase over the time but do take that lightly because every horse is different like every human is different every stomach is different so it very varies it really varies from horse to horse now for story time <laughs> out of all seriousness um so for i got her um in december and we di the vet diagnosed her with ulcers and december of the after the week we got her so she, we believe she already had ulcers she just was already trying to bite us when we touched those g-spots like i said um i did really wasn't familiar with her at the time now i am what's her normal what's her not um so the vet kind of diagnosed her um, and told me she had ulcers so we gave her medication for that uh the geo on guard so we thought she was done with ulcers but they came back and then we had a re-medicate her and we did medicate her for a couple weeks and then we medicated her for a whole month essentially just that way those ulcers completely stopped and then after those ulcers what we did was we gave her um, ulcer prevention pellets um, you would hear this a lot in the horse industry it is more cheaper to prevent an issue than to cure it after it happens essentially because if you're prevent it let's say you buy the pellets to prevent ulcers and they're like $30 that's a lot cheaper than if they get ulcers and you have to pay $500 or $600 vet bill um, depending on the vet that you choose and the care that you want for the horse um, essentially how expensive that vet charges you um, it's cheaper to prevent a horse from getting sick with the right environment with the right, right tools they need rather than curing it after and spending all that money. And one last and final topic I do want to introduce to you guys and talk about is what is ulcers and um, how to prevent or what's the big topic about ulcers. Essentially ulcers is a gastric upset stomach where the acid from the stomach of the horse um, comes up and kind of scratches on the wall of the horse and it creates irritation um, as well as um, injury inside the stomach um, essentially this happens the same thing as colicking stressing um, not proper feed or sometimes what really um, gets horses to ulcers is not feeding them in the correct time so let's say you feed them um, 10 p.m. and then you feed them like at 9 p.m. that's really wrong for horses that can Creates ulcers essentially because um, they need two big meals but you need to proportion them correctly as well as they need medium and the middle snacks um, or medium small meals in the mi middle of the day um, just to prevent ulcers as well if your horse is known for ulcers um, with my experience with Floor um, she did get ulcers um, when I got her essentially we thought it was because of stress and as well as uh, feed change because she did got introduced to a more richer feed um, as well as she was in a new environment right so she got stressed um, so we she got diagnosed as with severe ulcers and you want to talk to your vet about it because there is medication for that and if you don't hear it right away it can create um, your horse um, death unfortunately uh, the same thing with colicking so you want to really pay attention and some signs that they're ulcering um, essentially is that they don't want to get saddled sometimes because um, horses some g spots of where it hurts them it's right on the withers on the top where the withers is um, on the bottom girth where near their heart um, or the back 
belly area near their back legs. Um, those, if you put pressure and they feel sensitivity, I know there's some horses that are sensitive down there, regardless if they have ulcers or not. Um, you just kind of kind of want to know your horse like that. Um, if you got your horse and you really don't know, um, a good way is to check in the weathers. So if you put pressure on the top and they kind of squeal or will try to bite you, kick you, um, that's a sign of ulcers. Um, but I will um, most likely consult with the veterinarian as they can really uh, do like an ultrasound or do a little more detail for sure as if they have ulcers or what's going on with that horse. All right, guys, that is all for this video. I hope you guys really liked and enjoyed this video. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe to this video. Um, leave a comment down below. I always respond to every person that comments in my videos. Um, if you ever need anything from me, any questions, there's no such thing as any dumb questions because we're all learning here and we're all trying to understand and really pay attention. Um, not pay attention, I'm sorry. Really um, learn something new. You know, um, I'm not going to judge anyone for asking questions uh, difficult or easy, as easy the questions are. We're all learning here. But as always, um, it was good seeing you guys and see you guys in the next video.